Hey, so this is just going to be a short video on this little cool thing which I found here. So um, this is a sample of a cello. Um, I got my dad to play a short, um, short note, and the note in particular is called a wolf note. And it's usually when a cello plays around um, E or F uh, on the C string, usually, or any other strings. Sometimes there's a problem, or if it's an old cello and it's a, re and, uh, it creates this very strange muffling sound, but this is what it sounds like um, originally. Oh, wait, hang on. Have I... Okay, yep, sorry. So it sounds really awful and muffled and um, uncontrolled and something's going wrong. Um, but this is, we're going to take that and then we're going to create this out of it. So it's quite a quite a strong, um, powerful you neo-funk know, bass there. A very uh, sort of what you'd expect out of a lot of songs. But um, so yeah, so I'm just going to walk you through the um, the process which I went through. So the first thing which I've done here is I pitched it down. Uh, it's unwarped or anything. I just found a small section. Well, I cut the front the uh, the uh, start of the sample quite a chunk there and just um, pitched it down this is what we have so it's just something for us to work with um, so here uh, this is starting this is more isolating well in the simpler here where we've dropped the sample it's more isolating of this sample and what we want to work with um, so, if I group everything together and then disable it, so you can hear the initial the sound, this is what we have. So it's just looped. Um, and this is where the processing happens. Um, to start off with, there's a camel crusher. Uh, well, it's just distortion. Uh, this is very quite extreme distortions, the compressor is switched off though. Narrow band pass filter, this is one of my um, personal audio effects racks and it's basically frequency splitting between the highs and the lows. Um, and in the highs here we have this dry wet rack so there's two signals being processed so they've got the unprocessed and the processed and the processed with the, or the wet signal. There's an also filter as pl um, playing the role as a uh, bandpass filter, and all that is being mm, modulated by this macro here. And there's a dry wet here, and it's just to start. To, uh, this is quite subtle. Automation, though, oh, that's not the right one. Um, it's quite subtle automation. Let's just give, start giving it the timbre and the characteristic. So we have more distortion. This is distortion to bring up the highs, overall distortion from overdrive, a bit of um, notch filtering, which is just to add to the characteristic of a neuro bass. Phaser, same deal, um, more characteristic. Um, adding and some this is quite subtle distortion and finish it with some overdrive now what I do is freeze the track but um and so then if I do have like if I didn't realize that I have the glue compressor on playing as a limiter um like if I resample it it would fuck everything up but um so that's why I freeze it and usually it's faster usually but um here we'll turn it off well We'll keep it on for now because I've started it with it. But um, the purpose for it was to hear the sound in context. But um, yes, I dragged it down and then I um, dragged it back into another instance of a simpler. And this is more processing. And again, I'll disable all the effects which I used.
Um, so this is what it sounds like now. So already that sounds really, really thick and heavy, but um, it's missing quite a lot of high end. Um, so I'll just switch this on the compressor, obviously just to create, uh, make the dynamics of the signal a bit more constant. I wouldn't always recommend doing this, especially with bases or um, neuro bases which have a lot of dynamics. So when you're working with Foley, that might happen more because when you have a peak in your highs or your mids, you it's going to duck not only the highs and mids, it's also going to duck your lows. Um, so that can create make your sub bass if you've already got a sub bass on it on the sample, which you shouldn't really have. But here I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. They'll make it sound really inconsistent, and that's not what you want. So either use a multi band compressor, which I personally don't do, or you can just high pass the whole thing and then just layer it over a sub later, which I would do. And this is a morph filter. Um, it's a Max for Live device. It's free and it's the best thing on earth. Seriously, it's one of my favorite right now and I absolutely love it. Uh, and um, all these uh, frequencies here are being modulated by all these LFOs. So there's a lot happening. Um, and that plays a huge major role on the sound and the characteristic of the bass. But, um, this is not doing anything. Uh, so this is more a lot more distortion. So more distortion on the high end to it's set as a band pass and it's located in the highs and uh, everything's driven down a bit just so that it doesn't create some uh, weird tone but um, just to bring out that more highs, more distortion more highs, chorus to give it that sort of wet uh, smoother rather, and um, tone or distortion uh, this is um, glue compressor but acting as a hard limiter because the attack is fast enough to be capable for to doing it for doing this and this is what it looks like when it's when the glue compressors are limiter um, I use this a lot um, also on my mastering because it just the um, distortion it creates is very desirable I really like it some echoing not great shape but whatever uh, do something better than that um, subtle distortion from the Camel Crusher. It's probably my favorite distortion units. Um, EQing to remove some of the harshness of some certain frequencies. Bounce all that down. This is what you have. Um, okay. And that's where we drag it all into the, uh, the last instance of Simpler. And um, that's it, pretty much. There's an envelope uh, on the pitch which creates that um, hard attack. Like that. And the spread here, this is, this is what I do this a lot. I'm not sure if people do it this way, but it's basically how I do phasing. Um, um, what happens when you turn up the spread is that it gets multiple voices of um, the sample and pitch them in different, like pitch them to very slightly different, um, but with by slightly different sense, certain amount of sense, and that creates this phasing effect, which is on some sounds it creates a stereo effect, which is desirable, but um, generally I don't really like it, but if you were to um, grab all the stereo um, voices which are being phased at different pitches and you were to reduce the width to zero using the utility pl plugin, it creates that um, uh, neurofunk bass sound which you hear a lot and a lot of, um, yeah, and everywhere really. So there's, Um, 
with our set. It's got, it doesn't have that sort of, um, yeah, phasing sound. Um, distortion just to thicken it up. And yeah, I isolated a really small section of the bass. I don't usually do this, but um, this is what usually happens, I feel. And to put it into context, this is what it all sounds like. Uh, this is just a short groove, which is pretty terrible, but just to give you an idea. Hope you enjoyed, um, and um, hope that gives you some new ideas. There's a guy who did it with a double bass, and I didn't really get it that idea from him. I already had this idea ever since I started because I played the cello myself. But um, yeah, get something like the cello or double bass or whatever, and you can make a pretty nasty narrow front bass out of it. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys later.